Hi everyone, in this video I wanted to go over some problems with you which shows how you can use the capital asset pricing model, also known as CAPM, to figure out the expected rate of return on a security or a portfolio of securities. Recall that the capital asset pricing model simply says that the expected return on any security or portfolio of securities can be expressed as the sum of two things. First, the risk-free rate, which is the rate of return that an investor can earn without bearing any risk. And secondly, some extra compensation for bearing the risk of investing in that security. And that portion is calculated as the product of the beta of that security times the expected market risk premium. So this expression right here is the expected market risk premium. You can think of this as the extra return or the extra compensation that investors require for investing in a diversified portfolio of stocks, which is risky. And if you multiply that with the beta of the specific stock that you're considering investing in, then that entire expression is called the securities risk premium. In other words, Investors are saying this is the total amount of extra return that I want for bearing the risk of investing in this particular security or this particular asset, where the securities beta is essentially capturing the extent to which that specific security is risky. All else equal, higher the beta, the more risky is the stock, and hence the higher is the rate of return that we expect or require from investing in that stock. So with that, let's uh, solve a few problems using the capital asset pricing model. So suppose the beta of Delta Incorporated is 1.38. This is a measure of Delta's risk, more specifically, systematic risk. Now, if the expected market risk premium is 5%, in other words, this is what investors are expecting to earn over and above the risk-free rate by investing in a diversified portfolio of different types of assets, say like the S&P 500, and the risk-free rate is 4%, what is the expected return on Delta stock? Now, if the capital asset pricing model holds, it would simply say that the expected return on Delta stock would simply be equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta of Delta stock times the expected market risk premium, which is this entire expression right here. And so actually we have all the inputs to figure this out. We are told that the risk-free rate is 4%, so RF is 4%, the beta is 1.38, this is given, and the expected market risk premium is also given, which is 5%. And so if you'll do this math, you will find out that the expected return will come out to 20%, and so that, therefore, is the expected return on Delta stock. Simple as that. All right, let's do another problem. So what must be the beta of a portfolio? So this is a portfolio comprised of different securities, which has an expected return of 9%. So expected return on the portfolio is 9%. And you're told that the risk-free rate is 3% and the expected return on the market is 9%. Please note that this is expected return on the market. So this is not risk premium. This is the overall return on the market. If you recall the capital asset pricing model, in this context, it would say the expected return on the portfolio has to be equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta of the portfolio times the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate, which is the risk premium. And so you're given some inputs here. So for example, you're told that this is 9%. And the risk-free rate is given to us, which is 3%. We are trying to find the beta. So I'm going to say beta of the portfolio. This is what we're trying to find. And then the expected return on the market is given, which is 9%. And the risk-free rate is also given, which is 3%. And so you literally have all the inputs other than the beta. And you can solve for beta. If you will do this at 9% minus the 3%, you'll get 6% on the left side. And this is going to be equal to the beta of the portfolio times, well, 9% minus 3% is 6% over here as well. And so if you do this math, you will find out that the beta of the portfolio is essentially, well, 6% divided by 6%, which is basically 1. And so that's how you can figure out the beta of the portfolio. All right, so since we're having so much fun doing this, let's do one more problem. 
So consider the following data on two companies. You have two companies, Dollar Usual and Eurotree. These are the companies. Uh, you're told that the forecasted return is 12% for Dollar Usual and 11% for Eurotree. What does that mean? Well, analysts are presumably looking at the stock and forecasting that uh, for some reason this is going to yield 12% and this is going to yield 11%. You're also told that the standard deviation of returns is 8% and 10% for dollar usual and euro tree. Here the standard deviation essentially gives you a sense of how volatile the returns for these two companies have been historically. And the betas are given as well. So beta for dollar usual is 1.5 and for euro tree is 1. You're also told that the T-bill rate is 4%, which is the same as the risk-free rate. And the market risk premium is 6%. And you're being asked what would be the fair return for each company according to the capital asset pricing model. Now, before we go further with this problem, I do want you to notice something. Notice that the standard deviation of returns for Eurotree is higher than the standard deviation of returns for dollar usual. And oftentimes investors say, oh, if the standard deviation of returns is higher, the stock returns are more volatile and therefore more risky. And that is true, but the risk that we usually care about as investors is not the total risk of the stock, which is captured by the standard deviation returns, but what we refer to as the systematic risk, which is the portion of the risk that cannot be diversified away. You can have a stock which is very risky in the sense that it has a very high standard deviation of returns, but if a lot of that risk can be diversified away, in other words, if you can get rid of most of that risk by investing in a broad portfolio of stocks, then that particular stock may have a lower beta or lower systematic risk. And notice in this case, that in fact is true. Eurotree has a lower beta and therefore lower systematic risk, whereas dollar usual has a higher beta or a higher systematic risk. And so please keep in mind that standard deviation of returns and beta, while both are measures of risk, the one that we care about is the systematic risk. And that is precisely what the capital asset pricing model says as well, that the rate of return that you should expect is a function of the risk-free rate and then the beta of the security. In other words, the systematic risk of the security. So with that information, it's actually pretty straightforward to figure out the fair or the expected rate of return for each company according to CAPM. So for example, for dollar usual, we'd say, well, the risk-free rate is 4% and actually that's gonna be the same for both the stocks, but the beta is different for dollar usual, for dollar usual, the beta is 1.5. We're gonna multiply that by the risk premium, which is 6%. And so if you do this math, you find out that the expected return for dollar usual is going to be 13%. So six times 1.5 is nine, add four, you get 13%. And if the analysts are actually forecasting something like 12%, well, Capim will say, no, you shouldn't do that because the fair rate of return is 13%. In fact, if the analysts' expectations are being reflected in the stock market right now so that if somebody buys the stock today, they are going to get 12%, capital asset pricing model would say, no, the stock is overpriced right now. In other words, its price should be lower why? Because we want the price to be low enough so that when investors buy at that price, they expect a rate of return 13%. So in this case, we would say that the stock of dollar usual is overpriced given the risk of the security. You can do the exact same math for Eurotree specifically. Again, the risk-free rate is 4%. The beta is one, and you're gonna multiply it by 6%, which is right here. And so if you do that math, you will find that this comes out to 10%. And so if analysts are expecting the stock to give 11%, and if those expectations are being reflected in the stock market right now, then capital asset pricing model would say, no, the price of the stock should be such that it yields 10%, given its risk profile. 
So right now the price is actually too low. It should go up. It should be higher so that when investors buy at that higher price, the rate of return that they can expect to earn is 10%, which is the fair rate of return. In other words, right now, the stock of Eurotree is underpriced. And so there you have it, a few simple problems showing you how you can use the capital asset pricing model to figure out the expected return on the security, and also to determine whether the stock is underpriced or overpriced based on that information. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.